Welcome to Impossible Science. I'm Jason Latimer, world champion of magic, and today I'm gonna to show you transformation with anamorphic art. Now, anamorphic art allows me to take a picture of a three-dimensional object and warp it to a two-dimensional shape that still looks 3D. And I'm gonna show you all the steps you need to do on Photoshop to do this, and I'm gonna show you, if you don't have Photoshop, how to draw a two-dimensional drawing that still looks 3D. So don't blink, <laughs> because today's episode is a complete mind melt, and you're not gonna to wanna to trust your eyes. So how do these impossible anamorphic images work? I mean, how do we go from 3D shapes to a 2D shape that looks 3D? Yeah, if you haven't figured it out already, we're tricking our mind. See, our brains are constantly trying to decipher what we're looking at. It's using shapes and shadows and size to determine what could this object be. Now, since it's constantly guessing, if we know what it's looking for, then we can trick it. That's right, we can actually trick our own minds. Here, take a look at this image. What do you see here? A white triangle? Wrong, it's not a white triangle at all. You're seeing circles with wedges cut out of it and some lines that have been added, but your brain is associating this pattern as if there's a white triangle laying over these images. Pretty weird, right? Your brain is using its past experiences to predict or determine what it's looking at. Like, when I place my hands like this, one hand looks smaller, but the other hand looks larger. Your brain is using the size comparison to determine depth. And as long as we remember that these are the rules that your brain are looking for, then we can use these rules and manipulate them to make an image appear 3D. This globe is working because you can see that the equator would be closer to you versus the poles. If we account for that distortion as it gets smaller and farther away, then you can turn this globe into a flat image. Pretty crazy. Now take a close look at this. What I've done here is I've printed out an anamorphic image and if you look closely at this side, this side is smaller than this side because when I rotate it, this is getting closer to the camera. So the distortion of getting larger in the back makes sense because it's accommodating for the fact that as it gets farther away, it's gonna shrink down. So by making it larger, it appears closer. Now, the other thing I did is add this foam core and that allows me to hang the image off the back of the table because that's a real trick to actually making it really selling the illusion. To make this, I use some standard editing software. If you don't have the software, that's okay. At the end of the episode, I'm gonna show you a very simple anamorphic image you can make that you can draw to make a 2D image look 3D. So find an object that we're gonna actually turn flat. And it helps if you have a tripod because we're gonna want to keep the camera exactly in the same spot as we do these steps. So you're gonna take a picture on a tripod and leave the camera still. And then we're gonna take the picture and we're gonna warp it to make an anamorphic image. Step one, create a new project. And this should match the page you plan to print out. For example, I'm gonna make mine eight and a half inches by 11 inches. Step two, create a new layer and draw a grid. This grid should be made of perfect square boxes. Mine is a six by eight square grid. Step three, import your image and scale the image to fit the warped grid. Step four, and convert it into a smart object. This will allow you to warp the images without compromising quality. Step five, duplicate that grid layer and recolor the grid lines. Step six, now warp and duplicate the grid using the distort and perspective tool. It should look as if the grid is going into the distance, like railroad tracks. Make sure the two grids line up at the bottom of the page. Step seven, select the warp grid and your image. Use the Distort and Perspective tool to unwarp the grid so that it lines up with the original grid. Step eight, turn off the grid layers and your anamorphic image is ready to be printed. All right, now that you've warped your image, all you have to do is print it up. Now you can get these printed up at your local print shop. Um, now, just keep in mind, the larger the print, the more expensive it's gonna be. Something like this size is about $20. Then all you have to do is cut it out. I usually try to look for a, strate a strategic place to cut it out, like the outline of the object. There's a gap between the globe and the metal bar here that I'm not really gonna worry about because it should match up with the background anyway. But if you look at the beginning of this episode, when I had an anamorphic image of the entire table, you can tell that I actually used the metal as the outline of my image. That made me camouflage between picture and real. And and so when you're getting to a single object, you really want those definite lines between like this blue and the background or this gold and the foreground and the surface. That's gonna help you out a lot if you can actually just follow the edge of the actual object. And once you're done cutting it out, it's gonna look something like this. Now it'll be kind of flimsy because it's just paper. That's why I suggest putting the foam core on it. 
But I wanted to point out something. The reason why I put on half of the paper, because when I tilt it like this and it's on foam core, you'll be able to see the foam core on the bottom from that angle. So what I do to get away from that is I actually put it only on half of the image. That way it tapers down smooth to the table, which is what we want. And I also just put a little support back here to make sure that it looks like it's holding itself up. And to line it up, luckily for me, I've got this little bit of the background coming through the picture. You can see between the middle bar and there. I can actually just use that as my guide to line it up. And so it's somewhere right around here. Now let's say you don't have photo editing software. Well, I got you. I'm gonna show you how to draw an anamorphic image. Now I scoured the internet and found a super simple way to do it. And you're just gonna need a few items. You're gonna need some paper, a pencil, a regular marker. I'm gonna use a Sharpie here. A regular marker, a fine tip marker, and I'm gonna be using straight edge. Actually, I'm using a triangle for this one. To do this, I'm gonna draw a four inch by four inch square. Now I'm using this triangle because that will give me my right angles. And if I do this right, we're gonna end up having a drawing that looks like there's a hole in the table. So you have a square. Now just connect the diagonal. And then we're gonna be making a couple of L's. I'm also drawing this upside down compared to what you guys need to be doing on your side. So hopefully it'll look better for you than it does for me. Upside down, it's kind of confusing. This probably doesn't look like much yet. That's just because these are just lines and shapes right now. Not that exciting. But as we start to add in the shading and give it perspective, or give it this perspective, it's gonna look more and more three-dimensional. So the next layer is we're gonna use the fine tip marker. We're gonna make straight edge here and here. This will be the edge of our pit into the table, which makes sense because when you can see something up close, it's very defined. And that's what this straight edge is doing. I was never good at drawing, so I always wanted to take my time, which is funny because I'm rushing right now. All right, next step, take your marker with a wider tip on it, and we're gonna end up drawing out these lines. Don't draw the diagonal, just the lines. Now try not to break that line up there, even though I did a little bit there. And what I mean by that is don't go over it. Okay, now the next step is we're gonna fill these in. I'm gonna start off with this square over here and you'll see why I made that square because that's gonna be the pit. That's gonna be where, where it kind of gets hard to see what's going on as far as perspective wise right now. But we're just gonna fill in this spot. Again, you wanna stay within the lines. So take your time on the edges here and then you can go a little bit faster after you have those edges defined. And then we're gonna alternate. I'm gonna make a black stripe up here. Now I'm doing the edge first so that I can go a little bit faster after that, but highly recommend doing the edges first. By the way, this is gonna look better on camera than it does in person. And that's because a camera only has, well, the our cameras I'm using only have one lens. Well, you have two eyes. When you're seeing something with your eyes, you're actually seeing it from two different angles. Even though they're in the front of your head, you're actually looking at them from two different points. That allows you to see depth a lot better than with one eye. So with the camera, since it only has one lens to look through, you lose the ability to define depth, specifically with a drawing. It, you can actually really get a drawing to look three-dimensional with a camera because of its one perspective. Remember, anamorphic art only works from one point of view. So even the distance between your eyes, well, that actually is two different angles. All right, so there you're there. Now, just grab a pencil, and we're gonna shade in only this side. Now, the side closest to the square at the bottom, we're gonna make that darker, so I'm gonna get this one going here. Get our finger to smudge it around. Now, then we're gonna go from darker to lighter to lightest. So, not as much on this one.
And there you have it, a pit and table. Now, <laughs> I know there's, it may not be perfect yet. There's probably one angle that's much better than the others for these cameras. So it probably doesn't look very good from that camera because you're looking at it from the wrong point of view. You're actually seeing this wall, which you shouldn't be able to see from that angle. So it's probably gonna be best to be from this angle to look down where you have this edge of the pit. So let me just the, adjust the cameras and let's uh, see how real we can make this thing look. So let me see what we can do here. I'm gonna get the right angle for this. This will look 3D. It looks a lot better from this angle than any other angle because from this perspective, you're able to see this wall and this wall, which makes sense versus this angle. Well, you really shouldn't see this wall. So the illusion doesn't work that well from this angle. And from dead on, it might work a little bit, but really you should be able to see a third wall as well. This front edge where the, the fine line is, that's supposed to be the edge of the table. But if you find the right angle, you can actually make it look like it's 3D. Well, if you enjoy my goofy experiments, let me know. Like the video, share the video with your friends. And if you enjoy just making the impossible topics possible, like turning a three-dimensional object 2D or two-dimensional object, well then make sure you subscribe to the channel. And until next time, stay curious. Because the right question changes everything. Let's get started.